ओम सदा शिव समारंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरु परंपरा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम ओं सहनावत स नो भुनक्त सा वीर करवाही तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तुमा विदुषा वह ई ओं शांति 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 श्री भगवान उवाच अभय सत्वसंशुद्धि ज्ञान योग व्यवस्थि दानम दमश्च यज्ञ स्वाध्यायस्तप आर्जव अहिंसा सत्यमक्रोध त्याग शातिरपैशुन दयाभूतेषु लोलुप्त मदव क्षीरचापल तेज क्षमा धुतिशौच अद्रोहो नाति संपद दैवी अभिजात भारत सो आज वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग दिस वैल्यूज और दैट संपद द वेल्थ दैट बिलोंग्स टू देवताज डिविनिटी इन दिस कंटेक्स्ट ऑलरेडी वी हैव सीन अभय द फियरलेसनेस सो रिलेटिवली I should be a free person. I should not have any fear, because the absolute fear is taken care of by the knowledge. So here, being the wealth as value system as my life, relatively, I should be a free person. If small small things I am afraid of, like you know, there are like many ladies. So there is a cockroach, there is a lizard, there is a frog, there is this. There is that small, small things makes them afraid of. Now, how to handle the situation? What Vedanta you can understand? There are many things. Okay, this is just sample example I am giving. Okay, how also men men are afraid of wife. Okay, nowadays so that is also fear. Be careful. Okay, <laughs> whether to attend class or not. So I need my permission from my wife. Okay, so that is also big fear. What to do? What not to do? However, let me not get into too much. Then the second one was called Satwa Samshuddhi. So that we translated as purity of the mind. Actually, it is more than purity of the mind. It is called preparedness of the mind, because the third value says Jnana Yoga Vyavastiti. So this Jnana Yoga Vyavastiti means what? Steady fastness in Jnana Yoga. so this vyavasthiti highlights very carefully that it is commitment it is not once in a while i want to attend class once in a while i have my but do not priorities that is not vyavasthiti so that is something do you not know, time pass that is something called do you not know, that okay i have some fancies so here he highlights very carefully because please understand if you have sattva sanshuddhi if you have preparedness of the mind if there is purity of mind then jnana yoga vyavasthiti can happen or else impossible it's like you know for example you want to study let us say you know physics so to study physics the person should have what basic maths mathematics if the person is not okay with mathematics 
that to basic mathematics. Definitely that person will not study physics, will throw and go for biology. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> this is what people do it. Because even if somebody pushes you to study physics, what you will do? You will try to break your head, mind will not be there at all. You will try to excuse, you will find out something or other. That is what happens because mind is not prepared. This is just an example, like I am saying it. So here, if the mind is not prepared, if there is no purity of the mind, which includes what? Bhaya Suddhi first, external purity. So along with the external purity, my body, my belongings and also secondarily my atmosphere. Then comes the mind purity or else mind will never become pure. It looks as though it is pure but it will be a cluttered mind. How? So this Jnana Yoga Vyavasthiti. So mainly when we say Jnana Yoga Vyavasthiti, we can look at, already we have seen in different occasions, even though we say here that Jnana and Karma Yoga. So what is that Jnana and Karma Yoga? So put together Shravana Manana Nitidhyasana. So this Shravana Manana Nitidhyasana, that the person is willing to do Shravana, listen to the scriptures. And the person is willing to do mananam, dwell upon, you know, releasing the doubts, the conflicts, that what the person is having experience and what the person is learning. So that is called mananam, because mananam, please, this is not right, okay? Mananam is something that to be taken care, carefully, Because if the mananam is not done properly, what happened? Like you are having now stravanam, one, let us say half an hour class, uh, almost every day you are listening to it. Stravanam is good. But mananam is not there. Why mananam is not there? Because your habits, your priorities, your work, all these things take over. So when it takes over, what happens? In the process, you can discover that always there is doubt. So after 10 years, you ask the same question, but in a different way, okay? <laughs> so no change, nothing. Same thing, but in a very different way. And sometimes Swami says, I am clear, but my friend was asking, my child was asking, or what should I answer to others? You understand? Because you want to be smart, because you are ashamed, you know that you are asking the same question and again and again, okay? Because this is lack of manaram. And what happens is the most important thing is called that Niti Dhyasana. So Niti Dhyasana is something it's very nicely you have to understand. This Sattva Samsudhi is very important. Why we use this Sattva Samsudhi? We need like every lady, especially if you observe, before getting into the kitchen to cut the vegetable, they look for a knife. The knife has to be sharp, supposed to be. If the knife is not sharp, it will be difficult to cut the vegetable. You will get fed up or frustrated. So that you also need a sharp mind for understanding this knowledge. Not a smart mind, remember. Here is a sharp mind. What is a sharp mind? You can look at the sharp knife. Sharp knife means what? So sharp. Wherever you keep it, that knife stays there and goes down with the pressure. Whereas if not sharp, what happens? You keep one place, it goes some other place, you understand? <laughs> so you have, to, you have to do pressure differently. Same thing also here, we don't need your smart mind, we need sharp mind. So smart, smart mind means cunning mind, how you can complete things quicker. Whereas a sharp mind, the mind must be available then and there. So that means the mind, that which is free from preoccupation. If the mind is preoccupied, it cannot be sharp. That's why you can see, look, when you answer sharply, not smartly, witfully, what happens? The mind is there available. 
If the mind is not available there, definitely you will not be able to handle the situation carefully. And here the knowledge is about one's own self. Mind will create, play a trick. So that's why here it says, Sattva Sansudhi again to have a sharp mind. So that what happens? Niti Dhyasanam. Why? Please understand, Niti Dhyasanam is something. First of all, through the Shravanam, cognitively, you understand. Aham Brahmasmi. So cognitively to understand, you need Sattva Sansudhi. Very careful topic, okay? Or else cognitively you will not understand. Now, after cognitively understanding, what needs need to be done is your understanding must be released from the obstacles or obstructions. You understand Aham Brahmasmi, but there are obstructions. So what are the obstacles? My body is paining. There is a backache. You understand? Swamiji, when there is a backache, where is Brahman? <laughs> Only comes my backache. You understand? It doesn't work. So this, my backache is a big obstacle for me. So through Nididhyasanam, I release, please understand, I don't remove the back pain. This is the understanding of Niti Dhyasan. I never remove the back pain. I cannot. But I release the understanding from the obstruction called back pain. So Niti Dhyasanam works very carefully to release the obstacles. That creates difficulties to assimilate my understanding or owning up my understanding. So this put Together, it's called Jnana Yoga Vyavasthiti. That's why we say, if you are willing, if you are comfortable to contemplate for longer time, that means it is Daivagunam. So this quality belongs to Devatas. No, the moment I sit, Swamiji, all sort of problem comes. I become restless. My body pain comes. This comes. That comes. That means Asura. <laughs> Asura, don't worry. Other time nothing came, but the moment you close your eyes, everything comes. Huh? So that's why Jnana Yoga Vyavasthiti plays a very big role. That's why what we say, get committed to the teaching. As at least you are doing Sravanam, hopefully, or physically you are be here, mentally God knows where, that I cannot check it, I need not check it also, okay? So, along with the Sravana, also you need to give importance to Mananam. Because Mananam will make you to grow. If there is no Mananam, your priority will continue. And this Sravanam will be one of the no auxiliary or one of the undertaking. So you have ten undertakings, so one more you have added. Like you no, know, I am also spiritual. You understand people also comes and you know, do you know Swami I am also spiritual. So I am also spiritual, what does it mean? I do everything also, I do this, okay? <laughs> However, let us not get into. So while discussing this thing, Jnana Yoga Vyavasthiti, the next one highlights that called Dhanam. So Dhanam, we use the word as Dhanam, not charity. Because charity dilutes everything. So Lord Krishna, as usual, he has borrowed this from Upanishads. Because especially in uh, Bruhadaranika Upanishad, it has been highlighted very carefully that Tametam Vedanu Bachanena Brahmana Vividi Santi Yagena Danena Tapasa Nasa Ketena Mevam Viditva Munir Bhavet. So from there, these three called Yagya, Dana, and Tapas. In fact, these three. 
Lord Krishna has taken. <laughs> so, here we need to see very carefully. So, what do you mean by this dhanam? If, because in Veda Karma Kanda, especially, this yajna, dhanam, and tapas are considered as most important disciplines. But here, very carefully, he brings first dhanam. So why dhanam? Actually, dhanam is one of the best remedy for many problem in our life. So one of the serious problem that we have and is very easy to catch anybody at any moment that is called lobha. So we say lobha, lobha means greed but I am not translating as greed but I will translate here as what? Sense of insecurity. Loha will come later on, okay? Because it's a big series. Let us look at this dana little carefully. So this is a fundamental human problem, you can say. It can catch to anybody that sense of insecurity. And it always has background music. <laughs> I am insecure. I am insecure. Now, once I have a conclusion, there is a moha. Conclusion moha means delusion. See, we, all, earlier we had studied after loha, moha. No, here moha leads to loha. Can you see this point? So there is a moha in me. So there is a misconception in me that look, I am insecure. Nothing wrong in it. But my sense of insecurity will go away with external possession. So what I see, what is my remedy for the problem of this sense of insecurity for Dova? This is what Dova comes. The more I possess, the more I will be secure. And this Lobha starts increasing in such a way, I only start gathering, gathering and gathering. So this moha leads to Lobha here, differently. So this misconception that I have, I am insecure, number one. Because I am insecure, now with the help of external possessions, now I can manage, I can get rid of my insecurity. Now let me have more and more. But when I am gathering possessions, gathering things, nothing wrong with it, but I don't analyze. By gathering things or possession, am I going to become secure? Am I becoming secure or more insecure? Number one. Forget about me. Let us look at others also. There are people, those who have plenty of things, they are insecure. There are people who don't have any things, they are secure. So that means I have to understand Possession has nothing to do with security or insecurity. <laughs> because my problem is, when I become old, what will happen to me? When you are young, what you did, what you become old, what will happen? Nothing will happen, okay? <laughs> at least when you are young, you are demanding, when you are old, nobody will look at you. That's the only thing that will happen, okay? <laughs> This is my version, okay? Don't look at. <laughs> so coming back. Here I need to analyze that this sense of possession becomes so strong 
in me that I want to possess more and more. Okay, fine. Now, this I want to possess more and more, I want to grab more and more is called Lobha. So, you have to be very careful. That's why we say very carefully that Lobha you have to be understood, understand very carefully. That there is some type of greed in me. Because Lobha is not only greed. I want to possess. There is a greed. Po plus I am insecure. That insecurity, sense of insecurity pushes me to grab more and more. So the greed comes because of what? Miserliness. So greed plus miserliness is called lobha. It's a very serious word, okay? That's why we translate lobha means what? Miserliness, chapter is over. Greed. Sometimes we translate as greed, chapter is over. No. Greed plus miserliness is called lobha. Now when we look at this thing, now this lobha, leads to many types of problems in our life. Because the moment I know, I am sure, there is miserliness in me, number one. Now there is a misconception, moha, that with this security or with possessions, I will be secure. Now there is lobha. Now greed plus miserliness will lead you first what? First, I will try to grab more and more. While grabbing, the first problem will happen. I will not mind about adharma. I will start compromising. So first problem will start because there is no limit for me. I go beyond. So that means what? I will not mind to compromise. The first thing will be because I always want shortcut. I will not mind to cut the corner because after all it's okay. I have to take care of myself. Nobody is going to take care of me either. This is the conclusion in me. So first problem is I will start compromising. So once I start compromising it will lead to adharma, papam. So that means there will be conflict in me. That's why we say lobha becomes a serious mental problem. Okay? I understand. Now, second problem is, <laughs> because you can look at a list of problems, okay, with lobha. Actually, lobha is such a serious mental problem. You cannot trust anybody. You will start suspecting everybody. Because what you will see, hey look, because the greed to possess is so strong, now you will start looking at others, hey, hey, why he is coming? Why she is coming to me? He or she is not interested in me. He is interested in my possession. So anything and everything, what you look at? Now, you only look at others what? With eyes, or oh, a different eyes called suspicion eyes. In fact, you look at everybody, including your family member, with suspicion. They are doing everything. They are talking to me. They are all these things only for my wealth. That's why this becomes second mental what? Problem. And when you to look at this point very carefully, because we can look at this lobha. Because I am not talking dana or anything, okay? From Lobha I am going so that everything in one shot I will complete with Dana. So then Lobha, when there is a strong possessiveness, what I do? Now I imbalance the society. 
So when I imbalance society, means what? So now I have plenty, others don't have. So in the consequences of it, I am more insecure. Why I am more insecure? There will be burglary. Some people, suppose I have children, my children are going to the uh, school, somebody will kidnap to get some money, like other countries, how it happens when there is a big gap. So that means what? I create imbalance and I be, become the victim of imbalance. So always I will have everything, but I will hide everything. I cannot enjoy, I cannot use. Because if I use, other will see it, then tomorrow with the gun point they will come, you have to give me. So my life is in danger, my family people are in danger, everybody is in danger. So I create the imbalance and I become victim. So when the gap between rich and poor becomes so big, automatically I am the first loser, the sufferer. And of course, if we try to look at, the most important thing is also we see that when I start, gar grabi gar start grabbing, I become attached. And that becomes a habit. So always I calculate how much it has come, not how much it has gone, okay? <laughs> Even if it is gone, so I always look at, balance it, do you know, especially this chartered accountants, they look at what? Okay, in companies, how much, do you know, first they look at whether surplus is there or not. So if the surplus is not there, their eyes will fall on what? How much it has gone. <laughs> then how much it has come. Suppose surplus is there, they will not look at the income, suddenly they will look, why? So much has gone. Why cannot it be reduced? Because typical all these, you know, um, uh, corporate fellows, okay? They do not look at how much you have brought in. No. Why this much has gone? You could have reduced first. So the serious problem is attachment. So you become so much attached that you do not know what to do. And of course, then most important thing is, as you start getting attached, that becomes your part of life. You will not mind to do what you like to do. You will never do what is to be done. And most importantly, you will have a lot of problem, especially towards end of your life. To overcome all these things is being highlighted dana. So why? Let us look at the same way whatever we discussed. So first we discussed that when there is lova, you will start compromising dharma. So when you start compromising dharma, so there is papam, there is a lot of conflict. So when there is a conflict, now we say do dhanam. So once you do dhanam, automatically the conflict will be resolved. Because conflict was related to that. So whatever you did, you want money or whatever you want, did everything, now you are giving it away. Now what will happen? Will you be able to compromise next time? Hey, I did everything, finally I gave it up. Why to compromise? Let me have my peace of my mind. So Dhanam takes care of compromise, consequences of conflict-free life. Secondly, as we discussed, that this Dhanam creates, sorry, this uh, lobha creates suspicious mind. You become suspicious of everything, suspicion. 
now being suspicious of everything is being taken care by dhanam so that means you don't become suspicious of anybody anything then the third one becomes here that the gap between you do not become victim of your sense of insecurity because what you give that you get back so when you give in the form of kind somebody takes care of you in the form of time some way or other you get back you are being taken care so you do not create the gap in one way in fact you never become the victim of your greed your sense of insecurity at least you may move freely then of course when this happens as we saw that that this danam also takes care of detachment when lobha encourages attachment now danam takes care of detachment so you would discover really you have given or you have given with some pain because if i have given something with the pain i will look back so that's why here also danam takes care of the detachment do you know i am clean it is exactly i should not use the word but i can say it is exactly using the toilet <laughs> remember this then the fourth one that we said that danam also takes care of your this lobha part and prayaschita karma that's why danam is considered as prayaschita karma in especially hinduism and later on in other religion especially if you observe for many mistakes that we do always we do danam this is the prayaschita karma this is the first and there is no prayaschita karma without danam <laughs> this is the first thing that's why all these brahmanas they will wait for danam okay to receive danam what they do that danam that will talk later on okay so they, they do this go danam so sorry i cannot get the cow don't worry so for nowadays what is the market cost of the cow let us say 20000 rupees there is no 40 50000 rupees minimum don't worry 10000 for cow is okay <laughs> so you add 10000 then you have to bargain with that person 1000 at least you have to give 1000 okay so then they will make and they have also you know a silver or uh, whatever one cow and calf okay they will keep it and with that they will do and again they will keep it back so you have given godanam <laughs> you should see the ritualistic person okay very nice nothing wrong in it at least so that's why if you observe in every culture it is there nowadays i notice also including in christianity also after death of a person people do lot of dana so we have also you know 16 types of danam to be given after death some culture they follow 18 times 18 types of danam i remember especially in uh, odisha there was a concept so nowadays i don't know whether it's there or not do you know after the death of the person what they do is the son supposed to have some coins and start throwing <laughs> and that too will throw in front of him okay <laughs> the dead body will go in front of the dead body will keep throwing it so stating that look a hey, look whatever you have earned now i am distributing better don't have any lobham for your earnings now it is my responsibility what i do what i don't do it just after the death they do it i don't know how far it is true or not okay coming back to the point we have culturally that danam to be given why danam to be given after death because we do not know the jeeva who has gone passed away how much papam has done what are the papam has done 
So as a child, as a relative, as a well wisher, my job is what to do the dhanam so that to take care of his papam. This becomes price chitta karma. This is a rule. So everybody does every religion now. After death, <laughs> sad part. Why can't I do before death? Because if I do before death, what happens to me? That I don't have attachment towards the possession that I have. And the best possession is this body. Because I am nourishing this body last 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, or 60 years, 100 years. Now, when I don't have a habit of giving dhanam, other things, other position. Now, this body, when yama will snatch away, death will snatch away, I'll have problem. And moreover, wherever I am possessed, after my body is being snatched away from me, we have discussed how it happens, what happens. Now, mentally, the jivatma will be hovering with reference to the possession. That's why any cremation ground, any burial ground, especially burial ground is very heavy in energy because all jivatmas hovers there. And near cremation, cremation ground nothing is there, but nearer to cremation ground is very heavy. Because in cremation ground, they cannot stand. Cremation means in Indian context, where the, they burn it. Not a crematorium. Okay, crematorium and cremation, there is a different. Cremation ground and crematorium, there is a big difference. That also has to be clarified. However, so here he says that this dhanam, oh, already I have crossed the time today. Huh? I am talking on dhanam. So this dhanam also takes care of that when death comes, I am not bothered at all. And more, moreover, because of dhanam, I will have a peaceful death. Because I am not attached to anything. I am not attached to anybody, anything at all. I remember, I really respect uh, one uh, Swami. Okay, he made some mistake, but one aspect I liked it, so I can highlight. So, one good, one uh, wrong aspect he did is, so, um, he made a, you know, will on his dead body, a Swami, okay? <laughs> These people should not touch my dead body. I don't know what sort of Swami he is. <laughs> what happens to your body? How does it matter to you? These are the people who should not touch my body. And he is called a great Swami. But he did another good thing. That also I have to respect. Because we have to see both sides. Towards the end of his life, so he had some donor donations and all these things. What he did is, he made it very clear, not a single pie he held. So he started giving checks to everything. In fact, in Chennai, one school got some good money. That is how I came to know in details. So they, the letter was being written because I studied in my childhood in such and such school. So that's why I thought of something to give. So in that, it was being written in details. So the person could give away everything. So in short, what I am trying to highlight here is, when I don't have any attachment, this is the point, when my body falls, I will also fall happily. I will not have time to look back. Because there is no need to look back. So these are the benefits of dhanam. More of it, dhamma, that we will discuss tomorrow. Om. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamadachate Purnasya Purnamataya Purnam Eva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Shanti